Good morning and welcome to the 1480 Club for Thursday, May 5th, 2016. This is John Lewis. Joining me this morning in the studio, Derek Belinsky. Derek, how are you today? Very well, sir. Glad to be here. Good to have you here. And we have a very special guest on the line with us today, Mr. Mike Waffle, a Hornell native who is now working in the NFL. Mike, welcome to the show. Thank you very much, and I just want to say to all, hi to all my family and friends in the area. Coming from Hornell, and we're very proud to talk when we talk about when we're watching the NFL, kind of the biggest sport here in the country, you're one of ours. We always like to bring that um, home, and I always say, oh, he's got a Super Bowl ring. So we'll get to that today. Mike, oh. one of the biggest things to talk about, you are now with the St. Louis, well, geez, here's what we're going to call. it come. again. Yeah, you are with the Rams, now located in Los Angeles. Well, you know, it's strange. When I came out of high school, I had a goal to live in all four corners of the United States, and my wife, Kathy, and I were able to accomplish that and then settle in the area that we loved the most. And I always wanted to come back to New York. It seemed like I got stuck out in California forever, so I was able to do that at the Giants. And I was back there probably eight months, and I wanted to go back to California. The weather spoils you to death out here, and plus our daughters <laughs> were living out here. So, oh, great. Um, you know, that opportunity to come back to California in our retirement homes in Northern California and, and to come back here. I have a lot of family and friends. Kathy's uh, family actually moved from Howard to Bakersfield, California, which is just over the mountain from uh, Los Angeles. And so we're uh, reuniting with a lot of family and friends as well in Southern California in here in Los Angeles. Great. That's exciting. How long have you been there? When did you make your move? Well, we, uh, we've, once we found out, uh, we, Kathy and I packed our stuff up and we moved our, uh, everything back into our home uh, in the middle of March uh, back in uh, Northern California. And I was at the Raiders for eight years and we bought our retirement home up there. Oh, great. We moved back, in, we moved back into that home. And then uh, we've got a kind of a three-way pattern that's happening, you know, with our team. And so we came down to... Um, Oxnard, California, at the, uh, the end of March, and what this is is uh, a training facility that was here in the 80s and the 90s for the Los Angeles Raiders, and as of recent, uh, the Dallas Cowboys. Actually, last training camp a year ago, August, uh, we scrimmaged the Dallas Cowboys when I was with the St. Louis Rams here at this facility. So that's where I'm at currently. Uh, we're here training in Oxnard. Um, through uh, the middle of June. And then uh, once we finish, we pack up and we're going to be headed uh, on vacation for about five weeks. And then we're going to be uh, going to training camp in uh, UC Irvine. Uh, I was there when I was at UCLA. It's down in uh, uh, Orange County in Los Angeles. So we'll be there uh, for July and August. And then we're going to finish up where the Dallas Cowboys were when I tried out with the Cowboys back in the late 70s is in uh, Cal Lutheran. And we'll be there for three years while we build our training facility. So it's, uh, it's, there's a lot of movement going on right now. Right. It sounds like it. And it's it sounds like also you've been to a lot of these places that you've got a good background that you've already, you're kind of probably the most settled of everyone. No, we are, and uh, we're very fortunate. We didn't take an awful lot with us uh, when we went to uh, St. Louis, and so when we went back in our house, and we we used to go there and, and vacation, you know, in Northern California. So we we've already purchased a home down here, so we're we're uh, pretty close to where I lived at when we lived at UCLA. We're one actually one township over, so uh, it's uh, very familiar to us. And Kathy and I are, are settling in uh, real fast. Great. And, Mike, moving on to the draft that we just watched last week. Well, it will be a week ago tonight. Thursday night was when the draft started. Uh, I keep wanting to say St. Louis. Uh, the Rams, L.A. Rams, made a big splash by not only trading up to the number one pick, but going all in on a quarterback this year. Well, that's kind of why I was hoping I could delay this interview because I know when Derek tried to contact me, I didn't want to talk about the draft prior to the draft. You know, because right. With yes. everything going on, but um, uh, more than uh, most people, you know, on on the Los Angeles Rams, I was one of the happiest. You know, I, I was at Cal Berkeley for six years prior to joining the Raiders, so we were in the Bay Area. I'm a big Cal fan, so I had a chance to watch Jared uh, Guff do his first 
drive in Memorial Stadium at Cal Berkeley when he was a true freshman and take the team right down and score. And I had dinner with him, you know, the week prior to the draft and, and uh, because I was a Cal guy and, and we, we talked and we had a lot in common, a lot of the people we knew there. You know, of course, we were in the Bay Area. You know, the Raiders and, and Berkeley, or Oakland and Berkeley border each other, so I never really left Cal Berkeley. So um, being a fan of his and a fan of Cal, uh, we knew a lot about him, and uh, we're, we're all really excited. And he's a special quarterback. Oh, great. And that's a great story as well because, you know, you being a defensive line coach, you might think, yes, you know, that's the offensive side of the ball. So, you know, and I'm sure you're familiar with every player and all of the coaches, but um, this is you're right in on it. Well, my specialty is quarterbacks, right? Because what my my job is to, to make their life miserable. So, <laughs> that's, that's, so I, I, that's what I do. I study quarterbacks. Great. Oh, I love it. Hey, coach, it's Derek here. Um, What's you that? know, hey, coach, it's Derek. Oh, Derek, how you doing? How are good, you doing? good, good to talk to you. Uh, you oh. know, looking at the draft, and uh, you know, Goff was first, Higby, then Cooper, Hemingway, Forrest, and and then Thomas to round it all out. None of that really affects your defensive line except for, the you pointed out, making quarterbacks' lives miserable, and you certainly did that with Tom Brady and the Giants. Is that a plus or minus that none of those guys are really on your defensive line? Well, it's a, it's a plus because we, you know, I have this, is, this unit right here is probably the best unit I'll ever have, um, and I'll tell you why. Uh, the defensive end group that I have are very comparable to the defensive end group that I had at the Giants. And they're, you know, the, you can see it, you know, because a lot of them are getting all pro recognition and those type of things. But the defensive tackle group is actually better than what I had at the Raiders. And that was a very special group also. And uh, so it's, you know, it's it's the best unit I've had. And we get the recognition. Uh, we're, in the four years that we've uh, been here at the Rams, uh, we lead the NFL in sacks. Uh, we have 186 sacks, and Denver's actually tied with us over that four-year period. So this group is very productive. But then when it comes to sacks and run tackle for losses, we have 420-some, and the second-place team has 380-some. So it's an extremely productive unit, and uh, so we didn't really need anybody there. Gotcha. Coach, the last time we saw each other was probably about three or four years ago. You were riding around in a golf cart with Gene Mastin at uh, the inaugural, I believe, Hornell football golf tournament. You know, And you always come back. You came back for St. Patrick's Day Parade, uh, sports night, and countless other events I'm sure that you know I may have left out or that I may not even know about. But what's it mean to you to be able to give back to the community and, you know, like, just for me, you know, handing me a business card or taking a picture with a youngster or signing an autograph for an older fan? Well, you know, the biggest thing is when I come in there, I try to be as humble and just be me because that's what I am. I've never let this NFL thing catch up with me. I'm still Mike Waffle from Hornell, New York. I've been in the NFL for 19 years. I've been coaching for almost 40 years. It was, it's been in, I was in college all the time prior to that. You know, I had a humble start at Alfred University. But, you know, so I've never got caught up into that part of it. And, and I've had more of a giving attitude. Now, um, we financially, we have for years financially given to the high school. And uh, and so the thing that uh, makes me feel good is that I can contribute, or we can, Kathy and I contribute that way and be able to help the people in the community. And uh, love for now, uh, you know, my, 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 uh, Mom is in the Marino family, so Marinos, I'm in that family on the other side of the Waffle family. So uh, we have a lot of family there in the area. And, and then my wife is from uh, Howard, and she has an awful lot of family also in the area. So it's always great for us to come home and, and see them. But, uh, you know, I, I just have a special heart. And um, I had a chance when I turned a bye week a, a year ago, I came in and I spoke uh, to the high school uh, during the bye week, and it was really a special event. And, and I just want to be able to try to pass my knowledge of, um, you know, experiences I've had onto others. And, and I love Hornell, and, and that'll always be a special place for me. Coach, I, I did a piece, again, going back to Gene Mastin, 
you know, on the other side of it, kind of the flip side, the family life and, and what it's like to be the wife of a football coach. Can you talk about some of the challenges that your family has gone through throughout your career? Well, I, you know, my head coach was Bruce Snyder, and, and um, I was his first captain on his first winning team at Utah State. I, I went to Bakersfield Junior College out of the Marine Corps and uh, transferred there, but he's he was the one that was responsible. I never really wanted to coach. Uh, I, I got cut by the Cowboys. I was going to Alfred. I really was working on my Masters. I, re- I just helped out. I, I wasn't really a coach coach, you know. They say that I was, but I wasn't, and I was going to the Atlanta Falcons, and Anyways, Bruce Snyder was responsible. He was Eric Dickerson's uh, running back coach at the Rams. He left Utah State and came to the Los Angeles Rams, kind of ironic. But he's the one responsible for getting me into coaching. And I'll never forget, I was uh, passing through the PE building at Alfred, and uh, the secretary come running out. I never went into the football office, and I was going to class. And she says, hey, Coach Snyder from Utah State called you. So I called him back, and he asked me, he says, Mike, what are you doing? And I said, well, I have a tryout with the Atlanta Falcons. And so he goes, uh, well, I have a coaching job for you. And I said, well, I don't want to coach. I really <laughs> am not that interested in coaching, you know. And, and he said, well, it's a great opportunity for you. He goes, how old are you? And I said, because I was older, and I was in the Marine Corps. Um, and so anyways, his response was, he goes, well, Mike, you're 26 years old. You've got a wife and two kids. You're not that good anyways. Call me on Friday. <laughs> oh. and that's how I got into coaching. You know? <laughs> and um, it was kind of a <clears throat> neat experience that way. And so I'm always indebted to him, you know, for getting me into this profession. And, you know, guys like Gene Masson, who, you know, how can you finish your career with three state championships? Are you kidding me? You know, and, <laughs> right. It's outstanding, and Gene and I have been friends for years, and and so we still talk, you know. And it's it's um, it's really it's it's a it's a neat profession. It's really a, a very 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 fortunate. Um, my kids uh, love it; they're around it. My grandkids love it; they're around it. And so it's a it's really a neat profession. It's better than working for a living. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for your time today. Thank you for being so candid as well. And what a pleasure to be able to speak with you. This was great. And this is John speaking. Let me close with one final thought or question. Where does your Super Bowl ring sit? Do you wear that often or do you keep it somewhere special? Well, you know, Strahan designed it and he got his way. And he said he said it's a, a ten table ring. I said, What's a ten table ring? He says, If you go into a restaurant you can see it ten tables away. <laughs> and 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 it is like that, okay? It's very uncomfortable to wear. You know, so okay, it, it's it's in a safe in Northern California. I don't get, I don't wear it that much. I, I, I'm I'm very fortunate to have it. Great, wonderful. I'm well, sure if you talk to Gene, his are in a closet too. <laughs> yeah, I know. Right? So I love it. <laughs> so. Thank I want, you. I want a new. I want some new ones for Los Angeles. I got a lot of grandkids, you know. I want to. I want to pass those rings around. You yes. Know? So. Well, <laughs> boy, what um, you guys had a great draft. You're in a new location, and it's a beautiful area. Um, I was just out in California, right in the LA area, um, in January, so near Seal yeah. Beach. So, I wish you the best on the move in your new location and with the team. Um, we'll be watching for sure, and we'll be keeping an eye on you as well. Well, appreciate it, and I uh, appreciate the, the uh, time today, and, and God bless everybody back there in Horn Owl, and, and thank you very much. Yes, thank you, Mike. Wow, what a gentleman, and thank you again. Have a great day. All right, you too.